Hi everybody, it's John Lamazny, and today I'm going to do an illustration of a Zen quote in Inkscape. Inkscape is an open source application for doing illustration, same kind of thing that you would do in Adobe Illustrator. And what we're going to do is we're going to do some text-based illustration. So for this, I have this beautiful Zen quote that goes to set up what you like against what you dislike. This is the disease of the mind. And this is a quote from SENG T apostrophe SAN and so here we have a single line of text right here. We're going to size it up just a little bit so that we can see it. And what I'd like to do is to break this up into lines uh, that I think will fit well on this square-based uh, format. And words I want to emphasize, words that will be bigger, I want to separate out to their own line. Like disease, I want to emphasize. And of course, I want to separate out the citation. So let's get this over here and size it up a bit. I'm going to hold down control as I resize so that I can control the, constrain the proportions. And then what I want to do is I want to use this uh, filter, I'm sorry, extension in text that is, says, uh, split text. And instead of splitting by words, I'm going to split by lines. And I'm going to say preserve original text in case I need to start over again. It does it. It's a little Python script that runs in the background. Python also open source. So we're going to take our original quote, set it off to the side. We don't need it anymore for right now. I'm going to hit 5 in order to get centered again on my screen. And then I'm going to start to position these pieces of text. And how do I know that these are still text? Because, A, I haven't done anything to them other than to split them up. Uh, but that filter, I'm sorry, that extension might have uh, converted it to path or something. I can always check by looking down here in the uh, notification area. So, of the mind, I want like that. Disease, I'm going to size this up a bit. Again, holding down control. This is probably not the font that I'm going to stick with, but... This is the disease. I'm going to take my what? What you dislike. I'm going to take against. I'm going to size it up a little bit. Move this down. Move this over a little bit. What I'm trying to do is to create a spacing that indicates almost like a path for the eye to travel. So it starts here, works down here rests here for a second because larger text is going to uh, be one of the things that you notice first, but it's also going to be something that you linger on. In other words, against is one of the more important words in this. And so we're giving it importance by increasing the text. Uh, this is just using a standard sans serif font. Before we go too much further, let's select this text. And we'll go into the text uh, properties, text and font dialog, where we might be able to choose something that is a little bit more appropriate. Uh, maybe something a little bit condensed. Let's see. Yeah, I like that condensed look. And this has sort of an odd uh, finish to it Oops. in the E. Yeah, look at those odd breaks. I don't mind that. Okay. Size this up again. 
Again, holding down control. And disease, I will size up again. I'm going to size some of these down now because in the condensed form, our format changed a little bit. And I'm trying to do a little bit of play here with the U and the P and the H. See how those almost connect. I'm going to leave the I, the edge of that I, the dot, uh, up against the Y. So there's some continuity there. We want a, a clear path that the I can follow. I think I'm going to line the T and the Y up with the G a little bit. Almost as though the Y continues up into the G. Size this down a little bit. And line up some of those letters. This D and I and this T and H go together very well and give me some nice spacing over here. Let me just see what this looks like more down here. I might even be able to line up the I's in the H and K. Yeah, this is not bad. I want to end a little bit to the right. Now, just to get some alignment with the edge, I'm going to come in. This is a thousand pixels, you can see here, by a thousand pixels. So I'm coming in a little bit. Uh, it says it's at 950, so this is 50 pixels from here to here, I assume. And 50 pixels from here to here. I'll do the same thing on the top. If you want to be really precise with the guideline, uh, you can double click on it and it brings up this. You know, if I wanted to make this exactly 950, for example, uh, and the X doesn't matter as much in this case because I'm using a horizontal hole. And what I want to do here is try to make sure that everything fits properly. I'm going to size this down a little bit. Let's see. So we're going to line up that period. I'm going to take the Z's and we're going to move it over. Uh, I'll size it up a little bit so that it matches that. I'm going to bring this a little bit closer to T and the I. Sort of like what we have up there. I'm going to select both of these. Of course, I'm using the rubber band select. And I'm going to take both of these. Whoops both of these I'm going to size this way down move it right to the corner of our allowable content space let's see what happens when we size up against a bit more aggressively line up with the top of the A. You can make all kinds of configurations, whatever really works for you, but in the end it has, to, it has to work. So whatever experimentation you do, make sure that you are considering the overall connections of forms. Whoops, I held shift down there instead of control. That's kind of nice. See how that T and the Y, let's zoom in for a second. So you have a T, the Y, and this top of this eye do some nice alignment. We can even drop some guidelines if we were being very precise, but not today. I'm going to hit 5 on my keyboard to go back out to page view.
and I'm going to select these now that those are coming into contact with that G. Move those down a little bit. Align with the G again. Get the Z's down just a step. Maybe for balance, I'll line up the I, the edge of the A. Oops, hold down control. So we have these strong uh, linear elements that are passing through the piece, your I. Even if you don't speak English, you would possibly find the weights of these things interesting. But hopefully, it's a contemplative layout, something where you have to meander a bit and think about the idea to set up what you like against what you dislike. This is the disease of the mind. I could not agree more. Uh, part of the issue that we're encountering politically now is about the idea that uh, we are against so many things. And I'm not saying to accept anything, but consider that uh, we're all on the same side in the sense that we're human and that we're uh, we have bad days and we have influences like money and alcohol and tobacco and all kinds of influences that are uh, not great for us, the, the food industry. <laughs> so the idea that somebody can be paid for their uh, abandoning more human, more common rules uh, makes sense. I can totally see how somebody can uh, want to gain power and gain money and all that. Uh, but it's not for everybody. And the result is that you feel like everybody's against each other. Speaking of against, I realize that this needs some kerning. I'm going to pull some of these letters together. Let's see. Uh, 80? Ah, how about two? How about five? That's a little better. Not a great curving in this pump. I don't mind it terribly, it's just uh not great. Let's see if we can do a Minus five here too. Yeah, that's a little better. Size it up again. Make sure our alignment works. Okay. So what else do we want to do with this? I personally think that we should add a background. And I'm going to import a picture. Sure, why not? So I'm going to pull in this funny picture. And I'm going to hit 4 in order to zoom all the way out. This is me playing guitar. I was probably just 16. See my cigarettes hanging out in the background. I'm going to use this for my palette. So I'm going to zoom in to see both of those. And I'm going to send this rectangle to the back. And for this, I'm going to get my eyedropper tool. I'm going to choose this nice sort of off-white color. Let me see if something else works better. Maybe. Now I'll select this text. Select my color. Nice dark red. And then I'll select in. Select this middle. Go to my dropper tool. It's a D on your keyboard. Marlboro red. 
I'll go back to selection D D <coughs> excuse me see if I can pick the shadow in there I think I'll add some uh, gradient here and I'll select this, add a color to that. Black is too obvious. Let's see. Subtle differences in color. Back to five. That's not bad. I don't mind that. Still some spacing issues, I think. So in square format, we have some particular problems that we might not have in another format. That is mostly about spacing, because it can be a very condensed space. Part of the reason I'm doing this for uh, in a square format is because I'm probably going to post this on Instagram. As a result, uh, I want it to be square to start with, so I don't have to do some kind of weird cropping. This is a thousand by thousand pixels right there. You can see. Yeah. Now. We didn't look very deep into our fonts, because I'm not on my uh, Linux box where I have all my fonts installed, but let's just go back into text and font, see if there's maybe something for those two words that we might be more interested in. I bet I could do... Hearn Sands. Let's try Hearn Sands. That looks like a nice, sort of tight, condensed... Yeah, look at that. Line up our T and our Y again. Wow, those are getting really close. I like that. And it's a little claustrophobic, which I think is part of what the alarm is here in this statement, so I don't mind that claustrophobia. I'm tempted to do the rest of the fonts in that pen and sand. It's a beautiful font. Size this up again a little bit. Yeah, not bad. So, uh, as always, what we're going to do is we're going to save, go into documents. as an SVG. I will also export the page, it's a thousand by a thousand. Export it as documents. It's easy in mind, but instead of SVG, we'll do PNG, which is the bitmap export format. And we'll click on close when complete, and we'll click on export. And there we go. I really appreciate you tuning in and checking this out. I hope that you love Inkscape as much as I do. If I can do a design for you, go to lemasny.com, L-E-M-A-S-N-E-Y.com, and uh, check out my portfolio. I would love to do this kind of work for you, whether it be for social media or whether it be for uh, marketing. Um, you and I can work together to get the right message and the right look and feel. And I, I believe that... Uh, we can help each other in ways like this. You're good at doing what you do, <laughs> and hopefully I'm good at doing what I do, and we can help each other. Thanks.